this is Aaron with Steel Picking. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you uh, 14 chords that you can play at one position and we're also going to talk about using substitute chords. Uh, what I showed in the lesson is that some of the chords will interchange. Some of them sound almost exactly the same. Some of them will have uh, some of the basic notes out of each chord within the group I'm showing you. So you can get you a, uh, like I have a chord book, I have several guitar chord books that show you different forms of each chord, different ways to play them. Like sometimes you'll have the root on the bottom note, you may have the third on the bottom, the fifth on the bottom. And what I mean by that, say, say you play C, E, G, or C, uh, you're playing a C chord. And you may have the C on the bottom, the E for the third, and the uh, G, I think, C, D, F, G, for the fifth. So, in another form, you might, you might have it E, G, C. You're still playing those basic notes of the chord, you're just playing them in a different order. Understand too, I'm not trying to teach this as a bedrock, straight up theory lesson. Uh, some people may disagree with what I'm, what I'm saying. I'm saying in essence, you can play the notes that I'm showing you over the chords I'm telling you. So also, it's more like sometimes for contemporary music, you have a lot of chords moving in and out, like almost on every beat. I know like in our in our Christian contemporary music, you have that. So a lot of times you can get around, instead of moving up and down the fretboard so much, you can play certain notes where you're at, and with the effects, and which is what I'm doing on the uh, demonstration, you can get around that by just simply playing one or two or three notes. And like I've said before, a lot of times the keyboard player is playing the majority of the notes are the full chords or the rhythm guitar players playing the full chords. So we can get around that by simply playing single notes or just an, a basic part of that chord. So uh, I wanted to mention too, I did this also as a way to demonstrate the, uh, the Keeley Cavern. I did a video on that and Jacob can link to that and let you see that. But it show you how that you can take an effects pedal, play single notes and chords, you know, and it, it's really effective. It works really well over contemporary music. Okay, so on this video, if you'd like the backing track and tab, that'll be available at our Patreon site. And you can check out that uh, page by clicking on the card above or the link in the description. So uh, let's look at this lesson. And again, uh, if you've got comments on it, you go ahead and feel free to uh, include those. But my basic point in teaching this is to show you how you can play just a simple version of a chord, any of the notes within that chord, and still be legitimate in what you're doing. So let's look at it. All right, let's look at this lesson. Uh, this will be based out of the eighth fret so our C fret, if you want to think of it like that. Now, going to our eighth fret, some of the chords will sound exactly the same, and they'll work, and, you, and as you heard in the, uh, at the intro with the uh, rhythm track, uh, some of them are really just right on spot, you know, they sound exactly the same. Some of them are a little bit uh, out there, but again, they'll work over what we're doing. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm just going to show you the first one. In other words, if I did this, I said that was a C major seventh and that was an E minor seventh. There's no use me telling you the same thing over. I'm just going to show you how to do it one time, and then I'll call out the second chord it played over. Now all I did at the outset was I simply played this as a group, and then I played them as single notes. So it gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can do with these more, uh, I'm not going to say modern sounding chords, but uh, it would fit more in that style of music. So you can play them either way. You can play them as a group, a three note group, or you can play them individually. 
and the roll could be the way I rolled, like from the bottom to the top. You could do it from the top to the bottom. It doesn't, that doesn't matter. It's however you want to do that. Now going to the eighth fret, the, the first two chords the, and the uh, intro was a C major seventh and an E minor seventh. Now you can play this over th both of those chords and it'll work. You go uh, six, five, four, that's your eighth fret with your ED flat knee lever. You're gonna lower your fourth string. Okay, so that pattern will work over an, a C major 7th and an E minor 7th. 6, 5, 4, 8th fret, 4th string lowered with your knee lever. Now the next pattern, and they're, they, they were just random, it wasn't trying to be musical or, you know, follow a progression, it was just uh, as, what I, as I thought of them, I wrote them down. The next one was an F6 and a D minor seven. Now you can play this pattern over either one of those chords at your eighth fret, A pedal down, you play seven, five, four. So you have notes with that pattern that are within a D, a D minor seventh and an F6 chord. Okay, so now the next one I played, I played a uh, E minor 7th and a G major 9th. Uh, now I did that 8th fret, E D flat knee lever, playing 10, 8, 6 with the 8th string lowered with E D flat knee lever. So that's playing over an E minor 7th and a G major 9th. Okay, so that pattern will play over an E minor 7th and a G major 9th. 8th fret, everything's going to be at the 8th. 10, 8, 6 with your ED flat knee lever which would lower that 8th string down. Alright, the next one I played in the progression was a G sus chord or a G suspended chord and a C major 9th. Now th this pattern will play over that chord. You can go to eighth fret, play eight, seven, five. No pedals, no knee levers. There's your sus, your G sus, and you play in that seventh string here at C, that's your ninth. That's your ninth of the C. So that pattern will play over a G suspended chord or G sus chord and a C major ninth. Eight, seven, five, eighth fret, no pedals, no knee levers. Okay, the next one I played will be over a C seventh and a G minor six chord. 8th fret, no pedals, no knee levers, you can play 9, 7, 5. Okay, so that'll play over a C7. 
our G minor 6. Okay, so that's 9, 7, 5 here at the uh, 8th fret, no pedals, no knee levers. Okay, the next chords I played over, we had a G major 7th and a C major 9th. Now you can play this pattern and that'll work over both of those. You go to your 8th fret, A pedal, E, D, flat knee lever, and you played 7, 5, 4. Okay, and again we're playing notes within those chords and those, those three notes will play effectively over those chords. Okay, the next one we did was an E suspended and a C major 7. We go 6, 5, 4, A pedal, E, D flat, knee lever. Okay, and the last one we did was a B flat major seventh and a D minor seventh. Okay, seven, six, five, A and B pedals down. So that plays over B flat major seventh or a D minor seventh. Again, we're playing just three basic notes within those chords, playing with a keyboard player or with a bass player who's playing the root normally, or with another guitar player. These will work perfectly fine over those chords. So I hope you like this lesson. Uh, like I said, there's like 14 different chords right there that you can use. And what we're doing also that you see that these chords can pretty much play over each other. So when I'm telling you like the very first one was a C major 7th and an E minor 7th. I'm telling you those three notes that we did would substitute over e each other. So if the, if the song called for a uh, an E minor 7th, you could play this over it and call it a C major 7. So what you can start doing now is look at playing single notes out of those two chords that we're calling together. So we call it a C major 7, E minor 7, would work over each other. We said the F6 and the D minor 7th would work over each other. We said the E minor 7th and the G major 9th would work over each other. And then a G suspended and a C major 9th would work over each other. And then we had a C 7th and a G minor 6. You could play those over each other and then we had a G major 7th and a G major 9th. You could play those against each other. And then we had an E suspended and a C major 7th. You could play those over each other. And then we ended with a B flat major 7th and a D minor 7th. Those would play over each other. Now again, you have to use your own discretion and your ear uh, just like the last one, I'm saying B flat major seventh and a D minor seven. Okay, I was playing notes out of both of those chords. I was playing notes out of a B flat major seven.
playing notes out of the D minor and a B flat major seven. So they can weave in and out and work over each other. Uh, like I said, this is what I'm teaching. Uh, you can get your, you know, get to chord books and look at these things. I'm just saying that these basic three notes of each one of these chords will work over each other, each chord that I'm calling. So uh, give them a try. Some of them you might like. Some of them might be a little bit, uh, a little bit too dissonant. Again, that's how you learn your licks. That's how you learn your style, what you like, what you don't like, and incorporate. Maybe if you learn one or two out of this you like, then that'd be great. To be one or two more, maybe you'd be ahead. And maybe you don't like you don't like any of them. That's fine too. But give them a try. I think I think it's interesting and something to think about, and maybe something to expand your playing a little bit. So hope you like it. As always, Jacob and I just want to thank you for watching our videos here on our YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, if you do that now, uh, we'd appreciate that. Also, if you'll notice, there's a bell icon that you can click. That'll give you notifications when we put up new videos. Uh, if you want to comment on those, we appreciate that. Hit the like button. It gives us feedback on what we're doing. Uh, also, this... Uh, any of the equipment that we're using, or a lot of the equipment we're using, both on the audio video side and on the musical side, you can check that out and get more information about those by clicking on the Amazon link in the description. So as always, uh, Jacob and I just appreciate you. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. A little bit different, and like I've said at the outset, uh, not necessarily trying to teach uh, musical theory. I'm showing you some things that you can do. Some of them, you, uh, like I said, you might like. Some of them may be a little bit dissonant, maybe a little bit too far out that you don't want to include them in your play. Hey, that's all understandable because that's what makes it so interesting is that we each take our own taste and apply it to this very, very complicated musical instrument. So like I said, uh, we just really appreciate those who are supporting us on our Patreon site, on our Patreon page. You're helping us cover our expenses that we incur here monthly and uh, some of the new equipment that we're getting. We have goals that we're trying to meet to uh, purchase things and we really appreciate you. So you can check out our Patreon site by clicking on the card above or the link in the description. And Jake will have that up for you. Uh, the site's really easy to navigate and you can see what we're doing there. And uh, if you want to get the backing track and tab for this, so go there and check that out. So as always, we appreciate you and keep picking.